Syracuse. I'm based down in uh, in Maryland, and um, let's see. So Tenable is in our 11th year. Uh, I actually started the company with my co-founder uh, Jack Hopper and uh, Renaud Darrison, the author of uh, Nessus, right here. He said he wanted to keep a low profile, so uh, so hello, Renaud. Um, we basically started Tenable uh, a long time ago to really focus on making vulnerability detection the management of the vulnerabilities and the reducing the ways the attackers can get in, uh, lots of different ways. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about Nessus, a lot about other ways to find vulnerabilities on your network. Um, but as far as starting a company goes, even though we've been doing that, this is my second company, we've been doing this 11 years, now's a great time to start a company. You just heard from two great companies tonight, two fresh ideas on, 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 on going into this problem. You had an article up uh, from Richard Steinen before about how this market's going to grow 10x, you know, so I commend you all for coming out, uh, for doing this stuff. So you got to be open to new ideas and different things like that. Um, it's not the focus of my talk, but if you do, ever did want to talk about starting a company, uh, raising venture capital, building products, offering consulting, things like that, there's a lot of people here in the city who do that sort of thing, and I, uh, I really, really encourage that, so, so absolutely. So having said that, I'm going to talk about a couple different things. I'm going to talk about uh, vulnerability detection with two different new technologies. One's not that new. Uh, one's just leveraging credentials. And there's a, uh, we all are part of security. We all have to audit what's on our network. There's a lot of compliance regulations that have to do it. We're going to talk about patch auditing. We're also going to talk about looking at network traffic to discover network vulnerabilities and to discover what's out there on, uh, on the wire. And we're going to talk about how we do it at Tenable. And uh, we'll do that accordingly. Now, I already said Nessus. How many people out there uh, use Nessus? Have you guys used Nessus day job? A lot of people. So typically when I go out, everybody kind of raise their hand, which is good. Nessus is a vulnerability scan. We actually have a 15-year history of it that we, we host at the Tenable webpage. We talk about all the changes we've been making to it. And it's, it's very exciting. Um, but what we found is that although we focused on adding so many different features to Nessus, I'm going to tell you about a lot of different things it does tonight. Um, a lot of times people get it, they, they point it at their network, they point it at a server, and they get some results. And it really doesn't matter if they were auditing a VM, if they were auditing a web server, if they were just trying to do a patch audit of their wife's you know, laptop, or they got an uncredentialed scan of their home router going. Um, the point is they get some results, and for the, for the layperson, I got results, I'm done, I can check that off, hey, I ran, I ran Nessus. But the way Tenable looked at it is we actually interact we actually have reverse engineer people, we have researcher people, we have people who go out and live and breathe a whole wide variety of different protocols. Now, we do things like SCADA. I don't think a whole lot of you have welding tech control systems in your basements, right? You can't even get that in a VM. At the same time, you know, we actually can talk to some of the best malware folks out there and help you find malware with these, uh, with, with the scans that you do with Nessus. From Tenable's point of view, we really try to interact at sort of the API level with everything. And a story we, that when I start talking about credential patch on here in a second, uh, we went off on a bake-off. It was, you know, the other competitors in this market are basically, you know, Qualys, Foundstone, different things like that. And I had a customer basically say, look, I'm going to, you know, compete you against that. Um, I said, look, I'd really rather you compete with us against Big Fix, against your Microsoft SCCM, SCCM, SCCM deployment. Uh, he said, well, why is that? I said, well, we use the same APIs. You know, we actually look for the, the DLLs. We actually look at what's in the system with the same APIs that those agents do. So, so that was kind of how the lights kind of go on. But that's just because a lot of people, when they run scanners, they do uncredentialed scan. So any questions so far? Any comments? All right, good. All right, so why talk about um, the, these things here? Well, as Tenable, we are in a market where we're offering many, many different ways to measure what's on your network. We offer large organizations to be able to put multiple Nessus scanners out there and talk a lot about active and, and uh, uncredentialed scanning here in a minute. But we also have two other ways to measure vulnerabilities. One is with passive snippet, and we actually have a way that you can test that out in your homes and in your labs right now. And we also have something called a log correlation engine, which allows us to take logs from your, your Oracle devices, your Exchange devices, your Cisco routers, bring it all together and learn about vulnerabilities there. For the late person, we can actually take a little system log file and convert that to a true CVE patch audit. And uh, that's something that not a lot of vendors do in this case. 
But from our point of view, we're going to focus on active scanning with Nessus and passive scanning with something called the passive vulnerability scanner. We'll talk about that in a minute here. Now, most of our enterprise customers take these three products and they have a command and control system called Security Center where they can bring all this data into one spot. They can do all their scanning, all their credential scanning, all their sniffing, and all their logging. And basically from one spot, whether you've got a thousand computers, ten computers, or you know, hundreds of thousands of computers out there, you can see this, trend this, drill down, and do all this kind of analysis. So a lot of the screenshots I'm going to be showing you are from all these different products. So just, uh, just keep that in mind. All right. So now, why do credential scan? Now, as a vendor in this part, it's always kind of interesting to talk about accuracy and different things like that. But the use case for a credential scanner is to plug it into your network, log on to all of your computers out there, and basically do a patch on it, right? That's when you log on to a Windows computer, or, or you mentioned you were a Linux. Who, who was a Linux user out there? Which, which flavor? CentOS. So you, you run Yum, you run AP app, whatever, right? Doesn't really. How about you, sir? Uh, okay, very good, very good. So when you log on and you look at that that patches, you, you kind of know what's 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 in there, right? But from a auditor's point of view, we can't we can't trust humans, right? So we want to automate that. We want to be able to look at many, many, many different computers that are out there and do that. Well, what happens is certain types of vulnerability scans, you don't have that sort of privilege. If you just have a web server, how many of you have ever done a pen test before against like an Apache web server? So what, what does the banner say on Apache? If you connect to port 80 and you nudge it, what, what does it come back with and say? It says I'm Apache version something or something, right? Can you believe that? What, if it says I'm Apache 2.0? No? You, you, it's probably Apache, right? It might not be Apache, right? It might be patched. It might actually be better than that, right? That's just one example. When you do a untraditional sort of hacker view of the network, when you do an uncredentialed network audit, and you actually look at all the services that are listening out there, you have to sort of make a best guess at that. Now at Tenable, we, we can come really, really far. You can do a fully, a fully uh, certified PCI audit with Nessus, right? But what happens is it's only so good. You can't ask certain listening services for the patch level of the kernel. You can't query port you know, 53 and see the true version of, uh, of the DNS server that's on there. So accuracy is really, really important. So with the credential patch audit, you can basically get vulnerability data for the patch level of all these different things out there. Now, Tenable actually supports a lot more operating systems and a lot more technologies than, than the other folks do. We happily support uh, you know, most Linux systems. Remember, it just kind of says Linux. We actually identify, what do we have, about, about 10, maybe 11 flavors, everything from Fedora to scientific Linux. We just added Amazon's AMI, which is their own you know, version of Linux. So if your boss or your manager or your PCI auditor says, hey, you have to prove that this system is indeed patched, you can do this in a very, very reliable and accurate manner. Does that make sense? Now, I'm not doing a good job comparing and contrasting this, but if you've downloaded Nessus, pointed at something, got some results, and you compared those results to what you get with a patch audit, it's night and day. More importantly, from a language point of view, if you had to go to your IT person and said, hey, I did some scanning on our website last night, I think the Apache version is kind of, you know, it's kind of old, I'm not sure, the banner's kind of off. You know, your uh, Red Hat certified admin is going to look at you and is going to say, what, what are you talking about? You know, what, what patch are you talking about? What, what am I missing? What am I doing wrong? And a lot of times, this is the gap that a lot of security auditors have when talking to their IT people. They don't have the right language. And a lot of times, we, we're, too, we're too stuck on things like CVEs and risk ratings and things like that. An IT person who's applying patches speaks what language? The language of patches. So when you do a credential patch on it. When you actually log in with, with Nessus, and I, I say this login, I'm, I'm kind of being uh, loose with that term, right? On, on uh, 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 routers, it might be, you know, the equivalent of logging into a Cisco router or running the enable command. On uh, certain patch uh, 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 databases, it's equivalent to connecting with SQL, doing queries that way. Uh, certain other technologies, you know, we're actually reading the actual DLLs off the disk. The point is, is that once we're there, we can actually tell the admin the exact patches they need to apply. And this sounds trivial, especially if you think about it in, in, a, in, an, in an environment where 
hey, every day, I, every 30 days I do a full patch install or things like that. But the point is, if you're trying to communicate risk and trying to say, tell to somebody who doesn't speak your language, doesn't speak the world of penetration testing and malware and things like that, trying to tell them to upgrade what they're doing, it's, it's a really important, uh, uh, really important point. More importantly, when you actually start saying, look, you IT people out there are busy. You can do a limited number of things at any one time. Right? This is before everybody deploys Bromium, everybody deploys you know, their, their, their uh, containers for their malware uh, you know, from AirWash and things like that. But the point is, if you're looking at that IT people and they say, look, I can only fix one thing today. Is it Java? Is it going to be Chrome? Is it going to be something? You can actually say, what is the number one patch you can apply that's going to reduce the most risk in your organization? And if, unless you're doing this, you're going to be basically creating charts and risk levels that aren't going to go anywhere. They're not going to be understood at the board level. They're not going to be understood by your IT people or so on. So it's very, very important to do these kind of things. Does that make sense so far? So for everybody who raised their hand and did Nessus, how many of you have done a credential Nessus audit? Right? So if you have a, a Mac uh, laptop, you can actually just type in the, the username and password of that Mac laptop. And it'll log in with those credentials and do a full audit and look for a lot of other things. It's very, very in-depth. If you have any images at Amazon running on AMI, just drop those, those credentials in there and you go ahead and do that. Does that make sense? All right, good. Now, uh, sir. Can that be scripted? Like, you just create a text file with your password temporarily and have it run on like, So, uh, the question was, could it be scripted? And the answer is yes. So, both Nessus uh, and standalone version, you can set up a scan, have a schedule, have it email you when it's done, and that scan can leverage a credential. For uh, larger enterprise deployments, we have a product called Security Center, and that can manage the credentials independently. Like, I might create my credentials, I can give you permission to use them, but you don't know what my password is. So you can do that kind of thing. Which script language? It's really, it's really more scheduling uh, than it is a scripting language. So you can just control uh, you know, what, how often you want to scan. Uh, you can have reactionary scans on the enterprise side, so it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Sir? I'm curious, what do you do when you run someone who's in, you know, take that trade authentication? So, again, security. Right. So, for two factor authentication, that's always kind of been an interesting thing. We've had a lot of people come to us and want to integrate tools like, uh, like CyberArk, for example, and things like that. Um, how would you answer that at this point? Well, it depends on the. Uh, um, my nice question. Yes, yes, yes. Let me, tell you what we, let me tell you what we do do. Okay, so obviously we, we support the, all the different Active Directory domain authentication and stuff like that. On Unix, we do uh, you know privilege escalation, so you can log in with like an untrusted account. You can sue, sudo. Um, we do like what's the other one? LZ, LZO. There's like yeah, LZO. Yeah, but, you know but things like that. Question, basically, uh, you know, if, if, if you're running in a Windows domain, for instance, and um, and do so some kind of authentication. You can always use the NCLN hash, and and that basically goes in and, and um, works on the phone. So a lot of times, what happens, depending on the technology you're auditing, underneath the hood, there's always a way to kind of kind of get into that. Does that that make sense? Yeah. Most people who ask us about two factor, they want it in the products themselves, and we that's a big requirement. Yeah. Well, so that's like using right. 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 Other questions, sir? Yeah. You said you can actually prioritize for the. Uh, Yes. What could tell you to use? So I kind of skipped over in the interest of time. But for example, in this screen here, what we did is we said, look, based on everything you have here, and I've got a combination of some HPOCs and some Java, no one's going to have that at, at, at corporate, right? But basically, whatever your focus is, it could be all of your Cisco routers, it could be your entire organization, it could be just your <coughs> Windows 2003 servers. You could say, go ahead and do a sort, find me the patch that's going to fix me the most. Things. Now, that's great by itself, but what we can do in the security center is we can actually pivot on a lot of other metadata. Now, if you've used Nessus, you've seen that we spend a lot of time making it very, very rich with other metadata that goes with it. Is there an exploit for it? What's the criticality rate? Uh, what is the, uh, how old is the vulnerability? So, for example, here we took that same tool that we did. Let's summarize the patches we need to do. And in this case, we sorted it a certain way. But over here, we say create that same list, but only do it with exploitable software. So imagine you have an organization, and you've got a 1,000 computers that are missing a patch for Java, 
and a thousand computers that are missing a patch for Flash, for example. But, there, but the, the patch that's missing on Flash is exploitable. Anybody can go and download a, uh, uh, maybe a Metasploit payload or something like that to exploit that. We can, we can make that higher. Now, if you're familiar with uh, severity ratings, we do the same thing for things like CBSS scores larger than 8. Right? Everybody's patch isn't necessarily the same criticality level. Maybe you want to do that process on a certain score. So you can do these kind of analytics with our enterprise point of view, but my point about being clear to your IT people is you need to tell them to go apply that patch. Now, if you've seen, when you start doing these, in, in my particular example, I just kind of, uh, I was uploading random, you know, sort of Nessus results from all over. Uh, that is the second most common thing, but it was the first most common thing from these other ways of looking at that, uh, that data. If you have regulations that said you have to patch by a certain day, you can also come in and, uh, and do that. Maybe you're in this patch cycle, your organization is trying to move from a 60-day patch cycle to a 30-day patch cycle. Well, maybe at, 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 on day 29, you're panicking. You say, well, what one patch is going to get me you know, the most bang for the buck? So you can do those kind of analytics across all the operating systems, sort of Linux, Cisco, Windows, things like that. Does that make sense? Very good. All right, now, how many of you can walk into your corporate network, plug in Nessus, point to your email, your domain, and walk over to your IT people and say, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm going to audit all your problems, you know, just like your girlfriend. Give me your password, right? Because that, that, well, ultimately when I say credentials, you need that password, right? Now, in the federal government, they do this every day. We've got 20,000 customers worldwide. Most of them, most of the federal government uses our, our products. They do this kind of stuff. The government has mandates that says thou shalt audit with credentials at scale, right? This program's called CyberScope. The government got real smart a while ago. They started naming things really cool names. CyberScope, CyberScope produces a report called the Laser Report. <laughs> it all goes to DHS. It's very, it's very, very cool, right? Um, but you know, here in Wall Street, you know, here in the city, that that sort of mentality isn't really there. It's not there. So we do have a couple other options. One of the things we can do is actually not watch the watchers, watch the patchers. How many people here are familiar with enterprise patch management systems? Things like Big Fix, SCCM, Red Hat Satellite, and different things like that. So what we do in that case is Nessus, instead of logging directly onto the host. We actually talk to these things like Microsoft uh, System Center, and we can gather patch information. Now, it's not as robust as doing a complete patch audit. Right? It's only as good as the data in the patch management system. But if you're mixing that with only an uncredentialed scan, it's really, really beneficial. And it actually can solve a lot of headbanging between your IT group and your auditing group. I actually have to do calls every now and then where a uh, customer of ours will be like, hey, you guys are great. Uh, we think Microsoft is great, but the Microsoft patch management system says one thing, and the Nessus, you know, patch management, the patch audit says something else. Who's right? Well, one of the reasons we did this is so we could actually cross-reference this and tell you not only who's right, but sort of why. In this case, we can get down to the um, to the actual DLL level and provide more clarity to your patch management process, so you can actually avoid these debates. Sir. for this credential login versus having an agent running on mm -hmm. all your deployed systems. So the question is why why not have an agent? I'm going to skip ahead of this. No agent. Okay. Now, no disrespect to, to, to Airwatch and Bromi and putting, you know, this obviously putting code on, on the platform. Anytime you add code to a platform, you're also increasing what you have to manage. Right? You're increasing your, your basically attack vector. That's new lines of code. That's, that's more management that you have to deal with. That's more things that can possibly go wrong. That's more things that allow people to point fingers. So it's going to happen sooner or later, even if your product is perfect. If something breaks, the IT people will point at the security people. When we scan with Nessus, if the router breaks and we weren't scanning the router, they'll, they'll do that, right? So just as a general rule, we don't do agents at Tenable. Now, on our log analysis side, we do allow agents to collect and things like that. But from a point of view of walking into an organization and say, hey, look, we want to audit your network. And with full knowledge that McAfee, Symantec, I'm not picking on, on them, but we have vulnerabilities too. 
The point is, is any complex agent is going to have events. And I'll tell you this, those other third-party agents are typically the ones that go unpatched the longest. So that's, that's just my feeling on agents. So. Sir? Hey, you know, kind of a hacking tool, and, mm -hmm. and most of the security checks were like, uh, you know, unauthenticated. So, like today, can you tell me the percentage of um, security checks that are unauthenticated and uh, versus authenticated? Well, so it's it's uh, it's definitely skewed for authenticated because if you think about it, when we add support, and we do this overnight in some cases after you know years of research, we just turn on something like the Amazon AMI auth. Overnight, we're going to add patch audits for all of this. So we'll add a thousand, you know, in that case, it was about three thousand, maybe new plugins, you know, about fifteen hundred, you know, a Fedora and AIX could be something else. The thing that I don't, I'm not going to bring it up just yet. The thing that you really should focus on is how many CVEs we check and how many bug track uh, IDs we check. Those those numbers are actually a lot more interesting. And then for certain things, you're going to actually say, well, from Tenable's point of view, I might be able to check for CVE X, Y, and Z. Um, with an uncredentialed scan, with a uh, credentialed scan, with uh, a log, right? Because we actually can do, I'm not giving you a full pitch on what we do, and we may be able to sniff evidence of that as well. So, so we've really tried to move beyond, you know, is it just scanning and credentials to how do you want to, to find it? Because your HP laser jet printer, I can't log into that, right, and figure out what's on there. I have to do something else for that. Does that make sense? Yeah, and to further answer the question, maybe if you've got two teams, Doing plugins, one is focused on, on the local chat, and another one on the remote chat. And whenever we can check something remotely, can we do it? So a couple other things. Again, from a enterprise point of view, I'm a bank, I'm a university, I'm a I'm a I'm a DoD organization, something like that. I've got mobile on my network. So one of the other pivots that we've done with Nessus is we've had Nessus speak to the various. Uh, MDM vendors, but primarily focusing on Active Directory. Uh, Active Directory with ActiveSync actually has a large amount of data in there about your iPads, your mobile users, your Android devices, and so on. And what we found is that a lot of organizations simply have no idea how bad they are before they deploy an MDM. So we actually, a really, really good use case for, for the Tenable technology here is to actually audit your network Find what mobile devices aren't there, and you can make a you can make a case to perhaps, hey, we do need to go get an MDM, or perhaps we need to take our MDM and increase the settings in that to actually patch these things and put put them out there. We also have a lot of consultants that use Nessus, and we say, hey, look, you can go into these maybe smaller SMB organizations, point to their Active Directory server, and you know give your customer basically a list of all the users and all their unpatched you know, Android devices and 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 so on. Now, keep in mind here, Nessus never actually talks directly to the mobile device. We're talking to the MDM, or we're talking to the Active Directory server as well. Now, what do you need for that? You need credentials, right? So that's another benefit of, of, of doing these sorts of things. Any questions on that? So now, I, I do want to talk for a second now about passive scanning. So about, about eight or nine years ago, uh, Renault and I were, were chatting about just increasing scan time, trying to decrease the amount of time that organizations do between scans. My background is in network intrusion detection. And I said, let's look at look at the packets. Let's write rules with, that are vulnerability focused, you know, not snorts, not uh, a malware focused, but let's focus on finding what's on the network and identifying what's out there. So we've, we've been doing this for about five or six years. We have a product called the Passive Vulnerability Scanner. When you go to your app store, when you do DNS lookups to Salesforce, when you talk to, when you have a Dr. Watson event that goes back to Microsoft, we actually identify all those and we can learn there's an Apple device, there's a Windows mobile device, there's different things like that. So one of the things we can do in a, for a large organization is actually parameterize and monitor everything that's on that network. We actually can measure all the mobile devices that are on there but are perhaps not being managed by the, by the MDM. So, for example, let's say you did roll out an, an, an AirWatch. That's great. What about the Android tablet that was bought for Christmas that somebody brought into the network, hooked into the guest network, and they're not checking mail, they're not doing anything, but they've got Evernote on it, and they're trying to use it for work. You're never going to see that from the MDM point of view because they're never going to bother to enroll in it, even though it's on the network. Passively, you can see that just fine. You will never probably see that with a... Uh, uh, with a scan, because you can't ping a device if it's not on, 
A lot of times those devices don't have an open service, they don't have an open port on that, and they're just hard to plug. But from the point of view of if I'm a large organization and you want to identify how many mobile devices are out there and classify what's out there, passive is an excellent way to, uh, to, to do that. Any questions on that? All right, now another thing we do with credentials, we actually help the hunt for malware. And there's two big things that have changed in the hunt for malware lately. Of course, one is there's just a proliferation of malware out there. There's so many different ways uh, that people can encode malware and do malware that what they're doing is they're bypassing your, your IDSs, they're bypassing your antivirus devices, and they're getting onto your system. Now, what we've done with Nest is we're not a malware company, right? We're not an antivirus company. But what we do is we said, look, while we're on that system with credentials, we're going to see if McAfee's on there, if Semantic's on there, if Kaspersky's on there. We're going to make sure that it's, there's no vulnerabilities with that antivirus tool. We're going to make sure that there's no uh, out-of-date signatures with that tool. And we're also going to make sure it's configured correctly. But lastly, we're going to look at all of your running processes. And we have a cloud-based method that takes the running processes and identifies them as malware. It's a very popular effect. It's becoming, it used, this used to be sort of like the cheap alternative to, to finding antivirus versus having a persistent agent, so to speak. But now, the cloud just really, really enables this kind of technology. It allows us to do a very, very rapid lookup and say, hey, look, you've got a running process. It's malware. I've actually stopped in my, my home lab. I got a couple kids and stuff like that. I used to have like the free version of Trend and the home McAfee and stuff. I just turned those off, and I've been running this. It's, it's just as effective. My son downloads two or three viruses a month. I detected two or three viruses a month. It's not a big, not a big deal. But the detection rate with this kind of technique is really, really good. Now, from an enterprise point of view, what's interesting here is that it's not so much a failure of Semantic or McAfee or Trent. It's a failure of the enterprise. If you look at that enterprise and say, look, I'm going to just grade these enterprises on a grade of A to B to C on how good they can maintain 100% deployment of those antivirus agents, keep them all up to date, all patched, all connected to the internet with no issues. It's not good. Almost every one of these organizations I've seen that's had one of these antivirus agents, look at the New York Times. They had antivirus, right? And they kind of, there's some stuff in the press about, you know, hey, they kind of threw semantic under the bus and stuff like that. But the reality is, I've been to a lot of these organizations here in Wall Street. They're not, I wouldn't even give them A's at running this kind of stuff, right? So part of this audit from a Nessus point of view really, really makes sense because we can not only come along and say, hey, look, this host is missing 50 patches. It's AV is completely useless, right? And if you do it from that point of view, that's a really, really valuable to your organization. And it can take an incident that what you'll describe as APT as just, yeah, really, it was just a poorly configured antivirus system. Does that make sense? Now, a lot of people don't really expect this from a vulnerability scan. It's called a vulnerability scan. From our point of view, it's still a vulnerability, right? You could have had a vulnerability in your unpatched McAfee or semantic. And frankly, you've got software running there. Yes, it's malware, but it's software that's malicious and exploitable. So from our point of view, it makes perfect sense, but we're looking at the world through a vulnerability sort of, sort of lens. Does that make sense? All right, good. Just going to skip ahead a couple ones. Uh, I, I got to add configuration auditing into this. Now, how many people here have actually had to do a PCI audit, a FISMA audit, Center for Internet Security. What, what type of one did you have to do, sir? Uh, everything from AML, FISMA, and the IC. Very good. Very good. So usually, a lot these standards are, some of them are very high level and procedural. All those of them dictate things like password lengths, right? If you do a PCI audit, it tells you you have to do that. So what we've done at Tenable, again, you need credentials to do this. You can leverage all this content, right? Now, I've got one slide here where this is just a dashboard. And I've got all your assets by, by, by city. And I've got percent compliance against these different types of settings. But basically, with our technology, you can simply leverage your credentials while you're doing that patch audit and then say, am I PCI compliant? Am I FISMA compliant? Right? And am I SIG compliant? You know, things like that. And what happens is we actually get down to the actual machine check. So the industry is moving towards the standard. It's an XML standard called SCAP. Uh, it's actually got a lot of other substandards that are part of that. But we also have our own language, right? But the bottom line is you can do PCI auditing with us. You can do HIPAA auditing with us. You can do FISMA auditing. You can do DISA auditing. You can do government cyberscope auditing. You can write your own audits. You can cross-reference these things. And more importantly, you have enough evidence to get your auditors sort of off your back, so to speak. And from a practitioner point of view, 
we make it easy to do this with the Nessus tool as we do the enterprise-wide solution. So a lot of our people will go into the lab and say, hey, I've got an Oracle router, I'm an Oracle router, I have an Oracle system, I have a Cisco router, I want to harden it, I want to you know, apply the stigs on it. And they'll fire up Nessus and they'll scan that one IP address. When they go to scan their enterprise, when they go to scan their 100 Cisco routers or their 10 you know, Oracle, it's the same technology. So that's, that's Tenable's approach to doing these kinds of, of, of audits. Anybody ever, ever here not hardened a system before? Have you? If, ever, if you're all in security, you've never hardened a system, you really should go through with that. Or you should at least try to do the exercise of walking around, talking to your users, telling them why they should change their password length of one size. So that's a really good experience if you're, if you're getting into security. All right, we already talked about no agents. Now, the last thing uh, I want to talk about here is just the passive scanner and how some of this impacts some of the metrics that we're talking about. Now, again, one of the things that you get with credentialed auditing is client-side vulnerabilities. And when I say client-side vulnerabilities, I'm talking about Java, I'm talking about Chrome, I'm talking about Outlook, I'm talking about the clients, right? Now, technically, some clients do have services listing. If you're an iTunes listener, if you're a Spotify user, it opens up a port and it listens, right? So it can be attacked. Technically, ports are services, servers, so to speak. But for the most part, if you want to audit clients, you have to have credentials. And for some organizations, that's great. They audit with credentials and they're good to go. But if you're a university, if you're a uh, organization where you don't have permission to scan those systems out there, or even put an agent out there, one of the things you can do is you can deploy a product like our passive vulnerability scanner monitor all the inbound and outbound or internal network traffic and basically discover the client-side vulnerabilities. This is a screenshot from a, uh, um, from a university in upstate New York where we just gathered all of these vulnerabilities here. It's the same kind of uh, uh, plug-in layout as we have in Nessus. You have web clients, you have plug-in families and different things like that, but it's all done passively. So somebody here has an Apple iOS that's missing some vulnerabilities, somebody here has Google Chrome. What happened? Somebody fired up their web browser, they visited the internet, the passive phone scanner recognized that host, recognized that browser, and said, hey, look, it's a certain version, let's go ahead and, and, uh, and, and do that. So it's very, very powerful. Um, another thing that you get from this is you get instant measurement of vulnerabilities. And this is something that's very, very important. One of the things I've seen a lot of focus on in the federal government, here at Wall Street, and just in other organizations, is they want to measure. They want to measure. Now, I really believe you can engineer scanning to do daily scan. The best I've seen at scale is probably every two or three or maybe five days. John Stroyford, the person behind most of the Department of Homeland Security cybersecurity programs, he's basically recommending the government move to 72 hours, a full scan every 72 hours. Most people in the government, FISMA is like yearly, right? Every kind of shaking their head and stuff like that. They're trying to move to every 30 days. But if you're trying to move to every 30 days, and you're trying to move a patch management cycle from every 90 days down to 30 days, you only get three times to measure that, right? So you don't know how well you're doing, right? If you're the CIO and you're trying to say, look, we need to patch faster, how do you know? Well, the cool thing with passive is that you can get high fidelity measurement of instantly what's on that network. If you want to see if Internet Explorer is being patched, just measure it. Measure it. When it, when it browses, it tells you. Right? You don't need an agent, you don't need credentials. So if you're not um, as, as advanced, as mature as some of our other customers where they have full auditing of every computer on that network, you can simply just measure it and move on. Now I will tell you that a full credential Nessus scan is preferable in accuracy to passive. Right? You might have the world's most vulnerable Safari browser sitting next to the world's most patch Chrome, but if you never use that, you know, it's technically you, you, you're missing a patch. Now of course you could argue well, if you're not using it, who cares, right? So, so you can get into those kind of issues as well. More importantly, maybe you have a service out there, you have an FTP server, and right next to it, you have a backup FTP server. You don't have any traffic going to that backup FTP server. So a scan is going to find that, but passive network monitoring is not going to find that. So we have this, we want to have a blended approach here. Now, does this make sense? Have you, have you thought about this kind of monitoring? Typically, when I put up charts like this, people think we're talking about NetFlow or you know, intrusion detection rates or firewall logs or something like We do all those too. I'm happy to tell you about how we do that. But from a systems real-time analysis, we want people to do a net, this kind of trending to have better control of what's on their network. And they can only really get this with, uh, with, with passive monitor. Does that make sense? Okay. 
All right, I'm going to skip over this one a little bit. This is a really minor one, but it, like I said, I, last time I gave this talk, I was speaking to NASA, a bunch of rocket scientists, literally, you know, so that was kind of, kind of funny. Um, but one of the benefits you get from passive analysis is you can figure out who talks to who. Uh, a lot of times, if you came into a large organization and you said, what's your number one server? What's your most important server? And you went around that room, you probably would get different answers. Your IT people might speak in terms of bandwidth, right? Your CFO might speak in, in terms of what cost stuff. Your people might speak what they enjoy to them. Oh, I always go to SharePoint and Exchange and stuff like that. Well, one of the things we get with the passive scanner is we get to see who talks to who. Not in terms of bandwidth, but in terms of connection. What server connects to most other servers most often? So like in this case right here, this is a live IP, so don't, don't do it. Port 135, these computers are servers for that client. So basically this allows us to pivot where all the clients are and all the servers are. So if you've got a network of admins who are SSHing everywhere to their unit boxes, if you've got a network of people who are RDPing and all those desktops, or you're just trying to see you know, what, what the semantic antivirus agent is communicating around, you can easily measure that kind of stuff. And it really, when you talk about risk and pivoting, if you want to have one vulnerability that's being exploited by everybody else, you can actually measure that this way. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about here is just, is just knowing. So with Security Center, we want you to bring all this kind of stuff together. The passive monitoring, the credential monitoring, we want you to bring it back, and we want you to be able to prove what's on your network and, and, and the trends. And no matter what you're trying to do, whether it's just run a secure network, make sure, whether it's measuring your patch program, by trying to measure risk, we try to make it really, really easy. We've got a wide variety of information on here. Uh, you can't really see it here, but uh, one of the things we actually track is how effective your patching is. Uh, we can actually give you ratings on how good you're applying patches historically, so you can see how well you're actually doing with your patch programs. At the same time, we can also give you really, really good forensics. Uh, in this case, we're graphing the exploitability of server vulnerabilities over time. Now in this case, this particular server was exploitable with internet facing vulnerabilities for the entire month of July. If you were doing incident, uh, the green line is client side vulnerability, we'll ignore that for a second. But basically, if you did a scan today on this server and said, is this guy exploitable to the internet at all? The answer is no. But if you were doing incident response and said, hey look, something back in July was really happening kind of odd here. What was he vulnerable to back then? We have that data retained in, in the security set. And so this, this is a different way of looking at vulnerability. It's not the traditional, most recent scan. We sort of keep that history, that snapshot of everything there. And we've got all sorts of dynamic dashboards that can drop just right down with a whole bunch of industry and uh, uh, threat standards and so on. So, uh, like I said, a lot of people, if you haven't done, done Nessus, we have a, a home version of Nessus. You can go to tenable.com, go download Nessus, register for something we call um, uh, basically it's an activation code you get basically the Nessus Home, which allows you to scan up to 16 IPs, basically do everything uh, I said here except configuration auditing and, and PCI scan. We also have the passive vulnerability scanner. If you're like playing around with sniffing, we've got a version for Linux, we've got a version for Windows. Uh, there's an evaluation mode that basically also limits you to 16 IPs. You basically plug it in and you get vulnerability information right away. And you're, you'll be surprised what you learn. On my home network, you know what I have down here? I got some IPv6 addresses. I didn't know I had IPv6. So that's kind of cool to be able to just sniff that and, and, and learn that. And of course, uh, if you're you know, a larger enterprise company or organization, you want to talk about looking at all of this stuff together, you know, malware, SCADA, patch auditing, you know, please give us a call. Uh, we'll definitely take a look at Security Center, putting multiple parts of this technology out there and instrumenting your entire network. So having said that, any questions? Ma'am. Um, well, you mentioned earlier today that you could compare lots of policies. Mm -hmm. What about like, rapid testing? Mm -hmm. How do you differentiate that? So there's really there's the two like big things we talk about with, with them is that on the mobile side, our stuff's all built in. That's a separate product. And then we don't do penetration testing. right? So we don't need the Metasploit to, to do the exploit. We basically pivot off of the industry index. right? So we use core. We use um, uh, immunity, we use Metasploit, and we can we use a couple others. We can tell you what's exploitable without actually having to do it in real time. Like with the Rapid7 folks, you couldn't do you couldn't do a chart like this or any of this kind of patch management, you know, deployment rates and things like that. Because we take this real-time view of everything on your network. 
course, I don't have anything like the passive scanner or the log engine either. So I can talk to you more after if you want. Sir, how do you determine the what 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 files are formable? Mm -hmm. So do it's, it's like, uh, do you go like off of Microsoft's uh, list or what? So the reason I put this up is because we have to answer that in you know industrial controllers and stuff like that. And somebody had to do some research and figure out how to do that, right? Well, who yeah. does it? I mean, it's oh, Tenable. We have 250 people at Tenable. There's a lot of people who are dedicated to this to this kind okay, of stuff. Okay, so in other words, you are in in uh, league with these companies. So, so yeah. So it's a little bit different. So, for example, Microsoft is very transparent about their patches, right? They anybody can go and download their patches. Uh, anybody can go see what their <coughs> patches are. Now, a company like Tenable, we do a couple different things, right? With, with those, we have to answer five questions. Can we do an uncredentialed scan for it? Can we do a credentialed scan for it? Is there a way to talk to a third-party system and, and, and do that, which is another thing Rapid7 doesn't do or call us. Can we sniff it? Which, again, is we're the only vendor that does this passive sniffing. And then, does a log indicate that it's vulnerable? One of the things that we're really good at, we actually take logs from all these devices. And if you've ever done any type of analysis uh, on a log, how a version blah, blah, blah start now. We take logs like that and convert them to vulnerabilities as well. So we try to answer that question as many ways as possible. I would love to say we, do, we could do all five all the time. But a lot of times, our customers don't deploy all five, right? We did a whole talk on you know, doing credential auditing. Well, they might not do that, right? In some cases, there might not be a log. Right, certain applications out there, you might patch them fully all the way up, but the log never changes. It still says I'm Oracle version one. What about like for instance the other day Microsoft had a little oops mm -hmm. where some of their patches just was not up to par. Yeah, so we, we're on top of that. So basically when you use Nessus, you'll see it does a live update. So every day we push out new feeds uh, that has corrections in it. For that instance, has... if they have like for instance that oops moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, as far as if somebody puts out a bad a bad patch, that doesn't affect us so well because from our point of view, we're really looking for two or three. We're not pushing those patches. We're testing for the presence of that patch. So let's say there's a rongula.dll file uh, somewhere. We're going to open that up. We're going to get a version number out of that. So the worst we're going to do is check for somebody else's bad patch. So we are dependent upon uh, some of the vendors if they make a mistake in, in, in some case. But if they make a mistake, everybody's, everybody's at fault as well. Now, what's interesting is that when we start talking to some of these other folks here, you know, Cisco, um, I think you know, Juniper, Citrix, uh, Checkpoint, uh, they're not as mature as Microsoft. Remember, Microsoft's been doing this pushing patches to the world for, for 10 years. They're very mature at pushing these things out, having the metadata there associated with it, different things like that. Some of these other folks are actually coming to us and they're saying, hey, we want Nessus to audit this technology. How should we do it? Is there an XML file? You know, what's, should we use this SCAP? You know, from the federal government. What what should we do? So it's very interesting. Um, other questions? I don't see VMware, for instance. Uh, you know, this is not comprehensive, but we do audit of, of VMware. So we do we do the Hyper V. Uh, we do config auditing. Um, it's it's uh, it's very very interesting. Yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations on equity financing. Oh, thank you. And, uh, so So uh, it's really multiple things. So uh, thank you for referring. We we raised fifty million dollars from the uh, the same company that invested in Facebook itself, Excel Partners, which is good. But basically, the big reason we did that was because of this, right? I mean, we're doing this. Uh, you know, we have people doing SCADA, we have people doing malware, we have a lot of people doing uh, you know patch audit and things like that. We have a lot of people doing investing time. And you can't do that with fifty people. Right. So at the time that we did the raise, we were like 180 people. We're 250, almost 60 right now. We plan to be 350 uh, probably by the end of next year. Uh, so most of the investment goes to R&D, right? Investing in the product and the different kinds of technology. Uh, taking that passive scanner and getting it out there like Nessus. We have a quarter million Nessus users right now, and I want to get a quarter million passive users out there as well. That's a whole new model of, for, for monitoring vulnerabilities out there. So we're trying to do you know, things like that. Um, as far as where the market's going, it's really interesting. So when I see Bromium talk, when I see Airwash talk, very excited about that. From my point of view, I want to put them on there. 
I'd love to be able to, to audit if somebody has a, you know, if I, if I could help you sell a couple thousand, you know, bromine seeds, I'd like to come in and say, I want to audit that. I want to prove that because some auditor's going to ask that. And, and that's the way we, like, for example, uh, I'll give you a good one. Mandiant, for example, very popular in the incident response thing. We've already had customers come to us and say, look, I need you to use Nessus to use credentials to scan my entire network to prove I've got burr on it because I've been audited for it. You know, so that's where this organization is, uh, this industry is going, I believe. Um, good. One last question? I think yeah, you have one. All right, sir. It's not a technical question. All right. Uh, so you're a founder, CEO, and CTO. Mm -hmm. What percentage of your day are you a founder, a CTO, yeah. and a CEO? <laughs> wow. wow. Uh, that's uh, great. Because I'm a founder and CEO, right? Scary. So I'm like, I did a little bit help desk to like, try to make deals. So, like, so I, um, I had a very awkward moment the other day. So we, we have a site-wide license with the Department of Defense. Right. right? So they all the Nessus they can want, all the packs they can want, all the security center they can want. And we have this public forum, right? But we have a great partner. We have Hewitt Packard as our partner. They provide a direct help desk to, to the to the DOD, right? But inevitably, there'll be some second lieutenants, and I used to be a second lieutenant, who just can't get something done, right? So they go on the public, they go to Twitter, they go to whatever. And I was helping them. I'm just wrong. I signed it wrong, you know, whatever. So you start sending me all these questions, right? And I'm like, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm really need to send you over to HP here, you know. I'm like, well, who are you? You know, who are you? And he goes, well, who are you? I go, well, Founder, CEO, CTO, you know, but I mean, we were in the weeds with code and stuff like that. So um, the thing that I'll tell you, I'll tell anybody, if you run your own company, you got to pick what makes you happy. I'm a very technical person. I like doing technical things. I also like leading and motivating people and giving them opportunities. I'm not a micromanager except for the things I touch. I don't touch a whole lot except for the things that I'm really working on. Right now, uh, bringing out the passive scanner as a standalone product is really involved in that. Uh, but i got great partners like Renault who, you know, Takes care of Nessus, you know, really worries about you know all the people who make that go on and stuff like that. So, so absolutely, absolutely, it's good. Thank you for coming. Uh, God bless New York City, and uh, you guys are in a great industry. Keep it up. So. Thank you.